Today we're breaking down Downward Dog. Let's go. Hi, I'm Jen Witakonis. I'm a yoga instructor in the Tampa Bay area, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Downward Facing Dog. This can be a difficult posture for most people, to beginners especially, to understand and to align well with. So we're going to come down to the floor on the hands and knees first. And so you want to pay attention to your hands in downward facing dog. You want the index fingers to be just about parallel. You want the palms to press down and, pay, and press the base of the index fingers down as well as the thumb pads. Right, and so then we're going to, from your hands and knees position, curl the toes under and lift the hips back. Once you do this, if you haven't done it before and you're feeling some uh, tightness in the lower back and you don't know where to go from here, go ahead and bend your knees. This is going to release your low back. And just keep pressing the palms down, lifting the bottom of the pelvis, the sits bones, up and back behind you. You're going to wrap your triceps back away from your ears, too, to get some more engagement in your shoulders. And we want to breathe here for about five breaths. Relax the head enough so that the ears come just about in line with the triceps. If you feel like you need a little bit more space, you can do that too. This might be a more comfortable position for you in down dog. You could step the feet about a little wider than hip distance apart. Hold it and then come down onto the hands and knees again. So this was a great way to get started on your downward facing dog. Before we go any further, I wanna give you a free video 15 isometric core exercises. You can scroll down to the pinned comment below to check it out. So let's back up just a little bit too and talk about if you're feeling tight in your chest and shoulders. If you are, it's gonna be harder to get into down dog. So let's come onto the hands and knees. This is called tabletop pose too. You start out, starting out with a neutral spine, checking in that your knees are stacked under your hip bones. And then you're going to come into what's called puppy pose. So you'll start to slide your arms forward and letting your chest melt down towards the floor. Keep the hips just about stacked over the knees for this one. And you'll softly bring your forehead to the earth. If the forehead does not come to the earth though, that's okay. Just let your body relax into this pose as much as you can getting some opening in the shoulders and chest. Maybe about five breaths here in your puppy. And so once your five breaths are done, you can slide your hands one at a time under your shoulders. This is really good to get a stretch for the outer shoulders too. So uh, from this tabletop pose now, you're going to reach the right arm straight out in line with the shoulder and then you'll tuck the right arm under the uh, left shoulder, exhale. And you can start to bring your hips back too if that feels okay. So I'm sliding back into almost like a child's pose. The hips are towards the heels. If it doesn't feel good, you can leave your hips lifted into that same position and come into this pose that way. If the shoulder head does not come down to the earth, that's okay. Just let it be where it is, deepening on your exhales. Inhale deeply, exhale deeply. A few breaths on this side. Then you'll slide the left hand under the left shoulder, right hand under right shoulder, come back up into your tabletop and do the other side. Left arm reach out in line with the shoulder. Inhale and exhale. This is called thread the needle, by the way. You're sliding the left arm now under the right shoulder and extending through the fingertips of the right hand. Either leave your hips lifted, evenly sitting up, or start to bring them down towards the heels, creating more of a child's pose version of this pose. Few breaths, even and slow. 
Then slide the right hand under the right shoulder, left hand under left shoulder, you're back up in your tabletop pose. Try it again now that we've warmed up the chest and shoulders a little bit more. You can begin to curl the toes under and lift the hips back into your down dog. So once you're in downward facing dog, thinking about what modifications you need, bending the knees a bit, this will release the lower back. Okay, and just checking in that your first fingers are parallel, palms are evenly planted down into the earth. To check in on the palms planting down into the earth, you can always lift the fingers, stretch them out, and then place them back down again. Then go ahead and bend your knees if you're ready for more. Bend them deeply and start to sink them down towards the earth. You can hold here for about five breaths. This becomes a, a core movement. When you're ready to come back up, start to straighten your legs up and back, allowing some space between the scapula, the shoulder blades. So you're protracting a bit by sending the triceps away from the ears, externally rotating. So now coming forward onto the hands and knees after you've held for maybe about three to five breaths in that position. I hope you enjoyed that sequence on getting you into a downward facing dog. If you have any questions at all, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and scroll down to the pinned comment, 15 isometric core exercises. Thanks so much.